What's going on, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the top 10 peak district destinations. I've only reacted to a few natural areas within the UK. The Isle of Skye is one of those with the fairy pools and whatnot. And then the Lake District National Park. Both of those were absolutely beautiful. Had some amazing scenic hiking there. Um, definitely places I would love to check out when I actually get for a visit to the UK. But I thought it was about time to check out a new national park in the UK, and that is the Peak District. I know this place is kind of um, kind of in the middle of the country, it seems, of England. And um, other than that, I really don't know what to expect. Originally, when I heard of the Lake District and the Peak District and so forth, I began thinking that district meant park or national park. That's just what I assumed. But since then, I've learned that there are towns and cities within these districts. So I'm not really sure. I guess district is basically just an area within a country. If I'm if I'm wrong on that, please correct me in the comments. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out what the top 10 peak district destinations are. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle. And I'm Hayley. And today in the video, we're going to show you the top 10 peak district destinations that you have to visit. Dude, are y'all... Oh, man. I think they're doing uh, the van living thing. It kind of looks like it from here. That's so cool, man. If I was... Like, if I was uh, younger or if, like, you know, we didn't have a kid or something, I would totally do that for a while. It'd just be a fun way to explore. That's, at least that's what I'm guessing they're doing. It kind of looks like it from here. The Peak District National Park is located in the heart of the UK and is a well-known popular destination for locals and tourists. Wow, to dude. Here in the Peak District, oh, look at you'll that find some road, of the most man. breathtaking scenery this side of Scotland or Wales. In this video, we are counting down our official top 10 list oh, of man. Peak District destinations you have to visit. I absolutely, oh, I absolutely love those like that is something you really don't see in the U.S. that I know of. I haven't really seen much of this type of scenery. It's like mountains, but the mountains are covered with grass. It's so weird. Not weird in a bat, it's beautiful. It's just really interesting because the mountains I know in America are generally covered with trees or they're um, just kind of like rocky. So it's just a really nice change of scenery to see these, uh, see these green mountains. You have to visit. So starting off in at number 10 is a spot called Robin Hood Stride. Situated in between Matlock and Bakewell, this outcrop of gritstone sits proud on top of a hill along the famous Limestone Way. Oh man, just beautiful man. Oh look at them, they're doing bouldering down there. That's so cool man. I love that. Robin Hood's stride is also known as Mock Beggar's Mansion, as in its silhouette, it resembles an old crumbling hall with two towers. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? This collection of gritstone rocks makes this area a popular spot for rock climbing, mm -hmm. walking, landscape photography, and just generally a cool spot to hang out and watch a sunset. Have a picnic, man. It's like a great place for that. There are no dedicated car parks for Robin Hood Stride, but there is some nearby roadside parking available, followed by a short walk just to get to the rocks. Located how far just the walk one is. field away is a small stone circle for you to explore too, so check that out if you can. Stone Circle. So in at number nine is a spot called Harbour Rocks. Located in Brassington, not too far from Matlock, this ancient site is a fantastic spot with what lots is... of things to see and do in a small area. Hold on, what was that? I wonder if they're gonna show it again. It looked, it looked man-made, but it looked old. Harbour Rocks is very popular with local walkers and rock climbers as it's famed for its excellent examples of dolomitic limestone. That would be a great place for like some quick rock climbing. It's got a lot of different uh, boulders you could, uh, could experience. Tower 
towering pillars of jagged rocks make for a challenging climb, but also excellent opportunities for landscape photography. She's so beautiful, man. I love the green backdrop of like with the rocks. I love that look. Can't explain it. It's really interesting. Located it's like on the site, there is also Harbour Cave, which dates all the way back to the Ice Age. What is that? Is that the... No, I think this is the cave. I wonder what this is. Some sort of brick structure of some sort. So don't miss a chance to check out the inside. Speaking of caves, does anybody watching this ever go caving in the UK? Um, you know, there's quite a few caves around here. Um, I've been into a, a number of them, but never into anything too crazy claustrophobic in type because uh, I have a little bit of claustrophobia. Um, you know, I try to fight it, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm, a fun fact, I'm actually scared of heights, but I absolutely love mountains and I, and I love like sort of bouldering and stuff like that. But it's just one of those things that I have to fight, you know, cause I, I do get kind of, uh, uneasy at heights. It's just one of those things, you know, I think it's just, some people are just wired that way. You know, some people are wired to be able to just face heights with no fear at all. That I wish I was like that. I've tried to be like that. It just, mm. Yeah, this would make some great rock climbing. Look at that, man. Just some great also, hiking, too. Also, at Harbour Rocks, you'll find the crumbling remains of an old lead mine, which used to operate on the oh. site hundreds of years ago. The remaining four towers of the mine structure gives you... That's what I was looking at. I saw one of these, and I was like, what is that? But okay, so it's an old mine. Hmm. I wonder what they mined there. A real glimpse back in time. So in at number eight and staying on Some the beautiful theme of farmland old mines, back in we the have back a spot here. called Magpie Mine. Magpie Mine is located not too far from the village of Sheldon in the Peak District. It is a fantastic example of an old lead mining facility. A lead mine. Hmm. Wow, that looks like an old mine, man. The way the building is built, it just looks like that thing. I wonder how old that is. That's gotta be Mining crazy. Mining here old. was underway for 200 years until it was finally closed in 1958. Oh. And was the last working lead mine in Derbyshire. So it, it came about in the 1750s, I guess. So, huh, that's interesting. I guess I forget that in the UK, they use a lot of stone for buildings. It just makes it, even these buildings that are only a, maybe this building may be up to 300 years old or something, I'm guessing based off what he's saying, 250 years. Um, you know, but it, it looks like it potentially is much older than that um, because of the stonework and that I'm just not used to seeing as much of in, in the U.S. I love it, though. I love that look. It just when you have the stone buildings with a beautiful backdrop like this, it just because of stone, it just fits with the with the environment better than just some kind of, you know, wood or newer materials for some reason. Access to this site is free, and there are some small on-street oh, parking some brick not up too here. far away, oh. with a short five-minute walk to they... reach the site. Hmm. Magpie Mine is a nice spot to catch a sunset at, take a stroll to soak up the history, or to take some great landscape photographs. Here's something I don't understand. This thing looks like it's cemented. I don't know if it's just a cap on top or poured through. I thought this was like some sort of like, a, I don't know, a smokestack or something, and I don't really understand why it's capped. Maybe people were climbing it and it's for safety reasons. I wouldn't expect so, but man, I, I love visiting old buildings and stuff. Um, just, I just love everything that's old, man. Just can't explain that. I just like history. It's something I didn't really like as a kid, but I love just experiencing history. Even if I don't have anybody telling me about the history, just being able to walk through an old building old cemetery, anything like that, and just kind of experience the history myself and kind of figure it out. It's just, I love that. It's fun.
Oh man. Either way, this spot in at number eight is not one to be missed I love on your trip to the, the stone National Park. walls, man. Those are like, that's so awesome. Like that is not something you see in America. And it just, it's just such a great vibe on like kind of a farmland so area. So at number seven on our countdown, we have a location called Peter's Stone. This spot, also known as Gibbet Rock, is a popular walking destination located at the north end of Crestbrook Dale. Wow, man. Although this is a stunning location, it's home to a fairly gruesome past. Peter's Stone is the last known location in the UK to have displayed the dead bodies of criminals in giant metal cages. This was done to ward off other criminals in the area. Wait, in the area? Like, are they saying there was, they put dead bodies of people in the in cages right here in this area? Because like, this looks like you're out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking for the criminals in the area, like people like, I don't really understand because they, I don't, it doesn't seem like anybody would see them because there doesn't seem to be anything out here other than nature, really. Farmland and stuff. Hmm. That's interesting. Man. I just love all this scenery. It's just beautiful. Every little bit of it, every single change is just, it's just really nice. The stone itself is an impressive limestone stack. It's a lot of rises limestone up out of the valley in the can area, be seen from quite far away. Which you think about, the limestone would make it kind of a little more difficult for climbing because limestone can be, you know, crumbly. So, hmm. Access to Crestbrook Dale can be gained from some small on-street parking less than 10 minutes away. Oh, okay. It's a great family-friendly location a nice walk. for a small walk through the dale, or if you're feeling confident, you can attempt to scale the rock to take in the views. Wow, oh, man. So reaching at number six in our countdown, we wow. arrive at the stunning Kerbal Edge. Or I, was sitting, I was sitting here looking at this part and I wasn't even catching the, the cliff area here. And then all of a sudden my eyes caught up like, oh man, I now like see the perspective because I see this road or is this a road or a river? Uh, but I see this, I think it's a road, but I see this. And then I saw this and I'm like, okay, now this gives me perspective of how big this is because I couldn't see that before. That is... That is crazy, man. Why is known as Kerbar Gap. Wow. That is beautiful. This wow. incredible stretch of rock is located above the village of Kerbar, which is not too far from the famous location of Chatsworth House, which is best known as the location for Pride and Prejudice. Wow, man. That is beautiful. Look out in the valley down here, man. Access to the edge can be gained by taking a short walk from the on-site car park or by parking your car on some of the lanes and roadside parking which oh is available below the edge. You can see forever up here. Look at that. Walking across Kerbar Edge is fairly easy with a well laid. Wow. That is literally a postcard. Wow. That is, that is so beautiful. I love this landscape. I absolutely love this landscape, guys. I'm so sorry I keep on pausing, uh, but it's just. I have to take these videos in because things like this are just, how do you even describe something like that? Wow. Path running across the top, which extends for many miles, allowing you to enjoy a good stroll whilst taking in the incredible views. Wow. That is, 
phenomenal. We would personally recommend this location as a fantastic spot yeah. to catch a sunset, to take a picnic, or to just chill out and take in the beauty of the Peak District. I definitely, definitely would check out that place. So in at the halfway point at number five, we have a spot called Black Rocks. Black Rocks is situated above the village of Cromford, which is not too far from the popular location of Matlock Bath. Matlock Bath? Matlock Bath? Is that the same thing as Bath? Hmm, I'm not real sure. Black Rocks is a large area which is famed for its giant gritstone rocks which have a commanding view over the scenery below. Oh wow! Views from the rocks extend down to Cromford, Matlock Bath and beyond. They are Matlock well worth the bath. climb up from the car park. No, that's not actual bath. That's just some other place. Oh wow! Parking isn't free here, but there are some free spots along the roadside, followed by a short but what steep climb this? to the summit. It's like a... There is also a small visitor centre on site which sells What was that? Black Rocks like has a been wall. a popular spot for climbing since on top. the 1890s, with plenty of routes mapped out. If you fancy just a scenic walk, then the High Peak Trail runs through here and is well worth the hike, which you will see as you pass through various terrain, including rocky Look at outcrops, the color woodland, changes. I love it. The red with the green is just, just really nice. The pine trees, I think those are pine or cedar. Number four on our list is a location known as Snake Woodland. This fantastic location is situated towards the north of the Peak District, not too far from Lady Bower Reservoir. If you're looking for a location which has a little slice of everything, then look no further than Snake Woodland. This spot has many walking routes wow. that run through vast open hillsides, spectacular woodland, that is and relaxing so beautiful, streams man. that cut through it all. Wow. What? What are these purplish, I don't know, purple, burgundy, red, are those trees or just some sort of bushes? I don't know what they are, but it just, it gives a really cool contrast to the scenery. You know, this with the rocks, with the greenery. I don't know, man. That's just, that's something. Wow, man. I could go, oh my. <laughs> wow! There's Guys. a small car park located very close to the entrance, but we would recommend getting there early to avoid disappointment to this highly popular spot. I can see why that's popular. That's beautiful. What a beautiful place. Snake Woodland is a family-friendly location and a great idea for a day trip out to the Peak District. We have personally enjoyed coming here several times in the past just for a walk with some incredible views or to enjoy a picnic next to one of the many small waterfalls to be found here. So before we check out our top three destinations in the Peak District, if you've been enjoying this video and you've taken some value from it, perhaps you found the next Peak District destination that you want to visit, give us a big thumbs up on the video. And maybe consider subscribing if you'd like to see some more of these sort of videos. But now let's get back into the top three. I don't know how you can beat a couple of those, man. Those I saw two of them that so I know should be in the top three. three spot, we have a place called Thor's Cave. To me, this should be. We put this spot into number three as it's an incredible sight to see and somewhere where we think wow. you should consider for your next visit to the Peak District. Located just outside of Ashbourne, and technically within Staffordshire, Thor's Cave is a natural limestone cavern that overlooks the stunning Manifold Valley. 
Legend. Legend has it that this used to be the home to the god of thunder himself, and excavations in the cave have discovered human remains, tools and bronze items indicating it has been used as a residence in the past. There's those A short walk stone, from the car park located stone, in the uh, nearby village again. of Wetton will see you hike across some fairly easy, well-trodden paths until you reach the mouth of the cave. Be careful when entering the cave, however, as it can be quite slippery. Inside Thor's oh, wow, look at you the will view find some fantastic stone pillars of different colours and some epic views out into the valley below. This epic location is not to be missed on your journey to the Peak District. In at number two, we have an incredible location called Parkhouse Hill. Wow, man. This huge limestone hill shoots out of the landscape not too far south from the popular town of Buxton in the Peak District. This popular destination for hiking and landscape photography wow. is so huge it can be seen for miles around. I love that, like, rock. I said that before, I love that green. There is no dedicated like, stone car park this location. Combination. So it's worth finding some free oh. roadside. Man, that gets perspective. There he is right here. <laughs> yeah, that is a huge limestone hill. Wow. Parking nearby and taking the short hike to reach the destination. That literally is uh, basically a mountain. I, I, it's, it's not even a hill, really. It's borderline a mountain, really. Parkhouse Hill actually used to be a limestone reef millions of years ago when the Peak District was underneath a tropical sea. Wait, this was under a tropical sea? Really? Climbing to the summit is not an easy task, but the views from the top are among the very best you'll find in the Peak District National Park, and absolutely worth the effort. Whoa. <laughs> Sat opposite Parkhouse Hill is its sister known as Chrome Hill. This hill is also a popular walking spot with a similar height but less distinctive features. It's still well worth your time. We would recommend coming here early in the morning to get the place all to yourself. So this is it, our number one spot in the Peak District National Park. We have picked Castleton to fit our top slot, as it's such a popular spot with so much to see and do. Incredible rocky landscapes, Whoa. rolling hills and walking paths stretch for miles and miles. Castleton and the Hope Look Valley the area road, have man. so much to offer your trip to the Peak District. Oh. oh, like the reason I bring up the road is because, let me, I gotta go back there for a second. Hold on, Peak where's District. that? Popular spot with so much to see and do to see rolling hills and walk I can just imagine you know driving this and just looking up both sides just feeling swallowed by this beautiful backdrop of green and stone and just that has to just be an amazing experience driving through this tunnel of green and stone really is what it seems like around like that's just so cool man Walking paths stretch for miles and miles. Castleton and the Hope Valley area has so much to offer your trip to the Peak District. Wow, man. 
Starting off we have the giant hill that looms over Castleton itself, Mam Tor. The name of the hill can be loosely translated to Mother Hill. It's actually a site of a huge landslide which created lots of smaller baby hills underneath it. Baby hills. the battle to maintain the road that ran directly underneath it was finally lost due to the frequent landslips in the area. Oh, the that, crumbling remains are all that is left. That's an old road? No way. No, well, it does look like the it. The hill wow. itself used to be the location of a Bronze Age fort with the commanding views of the surrounding valley below. The climb of 1,696 feet to the summit is well worth your time to take in the very best breathtaking views of the Peak District. What is... what is that? Just a stone Once walk? up on Mam Tor, you can take the path that runs along the Great Ridge and extends for miles... Wow! Who built this? Did literally the National Park Service put this in? Wow! I don't know, that's... That's pretty cool, man. ...around Hope Valley for a shorter walk of 30 to 35... What? That is so cool, man. Wow. ...five minutes, you can hike from the summit of Mamtor across How the ridge into a go? small hill known as Backtor. So moving less than a mile away with the Great Ridge behind us, we come to a spot called Winnets Pass. Winnets Pass is a vast limestone gorge with a road that cuts through the middle of it. Yeah, that's the road I was talking this about. This road is one of the most scenic drives you can take in the wow. Peak District National Park, and we would highly recommend it. Dude. There are a few walking paths on both sides of the pass and several caves underneath it some of which you can actually visit, so look out for those whilst you're on your trip. If you can get lucky and come here early in the morning, when the low-hanging mist and fog is rolling through, the entire gorge is transformed into an almost European mountain destination, a true landscape photographer's dream, this spot is not to be missed on your trip to the Peak District. There's that road from the other side, I suppose. So that's it, that's our top 10 Peak District destinations that we think you guys should visit. Uh, what was your favorite? Uh, let us know down below in the comments. Yeah, and if there's any that we might have missed off the video, uh, let us know your personal favorite destinations in the Peak District and we'll try and do a second video based around that. Yeah, uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up on the video. Uh, smash that subscribe button if you like the look of our faces and you want to see more content from us and otherwise we'll hopefully see you guys in the next one Bye. peace wow first off i'd just like to say that these two did a phenomenal job with this video i don't know it seemed like they filmed most of that stuff themselves and if they did that was absolutely amazing but either way the way they compiled it was excellent but um Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful place. Um, <laughs> this, this might be one, the single most beautiful 
had this might be the pl- the number one place in the entire world I've ever seen in person or on video that had that many just amazing places in one area. Um, just it, this was literally my type of scenery, if that makes sense. Um, where it's the, they, I would definitely agree with their top one, their, their number one position. Uh, where's it at right here? Uh, this being the top three, absolutely. Uh, from from these ten that they showed, um, what was this called? Ah, I can't remember. Wait, where, is that it? Hold on. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but that place along. Oh wait. Ah, no, that's number two. Where's number one? I'm like, okay, I passed it. I have no idea where. Where number one is on here. But wherever it is, uh, that place is absolutely beautiful. My second favorite place is, let's see, uh, where is it at? This place. Uh, this is definitely would be my top three out of this list. Um, Snake Woodland. Okay. That's definitely top three for me. And Black Rock. Uh, this one right here. Curbar Edge. Those would be my top three. Uh, the number one one, the Curbar Edge, and I've already forgotten the name of this place. Uh Snake, Snake Woodland. Those would be my top three, personally, based off of this video. What would your top three be? I will 100% visit the Peak District. Um, I'd like to look more into it, see some of the towns that are in the area and stuff as well. Um, but this is just, this is my type of landscape. I can't explain it. Just love the stone, the uh, the greenery, the just I don't know. It's just amazing. And one thing that I really love that I definitely noticed here a lot is the stone walls in kind of the farmland. I absolutely love that. Here in America, you don't see that. You see just barbed wire or, um, you know, fencing up. Um, but this is just, it fits the backdrop of the environment better. It's just beautiful. Um, and it makes sense that in an area with a lot of stone, they would, would build these. But one thing this made me really realize, I'm definitely going to have to get myself into shape again before I come and take part in some of the hiking and stuff around here. Because, you know, I've kind of let myself, I haven't been exercising like I should lately, and I just need to get back into it. Because um, you got to be a little bit fit to handle some of these hikes, I can tell. Some of these hikes and climbs and stuff, whew, you know, <laughs> like you look at some of these hills, they're not going to be real easy to climb if you're not in shape. So uh, definitely uh, got to uh, look into that. But anyways, guys, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or otherwise. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.